Hi, I'm Matt from HockeyReviews.ca and this is the True 12.1 Goalie Pads Snapshot Review. So I get to test a bunch of things on this, specifically like uh, rebounds and like pucks that I rise seal, stuff like that. For the blocker and catcher with the puck machine, I can test a little bit more things that way. Um, just because my synthetic ice doesn't slide well and it's not really going to tell me anything of how these work compared to like a game and actual real ice. So I'm not doing, this is more of a snapshot review than what those are. But before we begin all of that, this video wouldn't have happened unless Just Hockey allowed me to take their demo set home for a week and make a ton of content on and put this thing through puck machines and do a bunch of tests on it and stuff like that. So huge thanks to them for that. With that said as well, please support them. So if you're looking to buy any hockey equipment or anything, please check out the links in the description to their Instagram and their website. Uh, buy something through them. They're, I've had great experiences with them. I ordered a custom blocker through them and the experience was phenomenal. Everything was really good. Everything was really smooth. I bought stuff through them before, before I ever really talked to them in terms of like doing videos and stuff like this. And everything was really good going through them. So I definitely recommend checking them out. And it'd be greatly appreciated as mentioning you from from one of my videos and that would also help me out a lot too just to talk, sh show them this stuff helps if you want to see me make more reviews like this of special and like a demo gear and stuff like that please just shout to the companies on social media let them know so in this case it would be someone like true that way i can actually test this gear and put it through its paces with the puck machine and then a bunch of other stuff and make content like this to give people an idea who might not be able to see the gear of what it is finally if you want to help support the channel check the links in the description to patreon and buy me a coffee everything through there will come right back into the channel so i can keep making more content and doing more videos block review will be up on the channel i'm not sure which one of these are going on first so check that one out i'm quite impressed catching glove review will also be on the channel again not sure when and the hunter puck challenge was done on the catching glove as well check that out as well again very impressed Overall, I'm really disappointed I actually got to see this set because I like it too much. Okay, so before we dive into this, I want to just call this out really quick because this has been a thing recently. True's wait times are ridiculous. That's just how they are. And a little bit of background, True bought LeFave. LeFave split away from CCM last year or something or a little bit longer than that. And instead of designing gear for CCM, they're making their own gear. And then you could basically end up buying the pro gear that is on all the NHL goalies and all the pro goalies for yourself and not just made overseas a totally different factory, totally different build. This is what the pros wear. This is the same factory, same materials, everything. It's phenomenal. It's amazing quality. It blows me away of how nice this is, especially compared to that retail stuff I've seen in the past of the old CCM stuff. Again, their wait times are massive. And if you can't wait for gear, I totally understand. And that's a personal choice that you have to make. Personally, I would be willing to wait because of how good this stuff is or check for stock stuff. So for example, Just Hockey has a couple sets of True Gear that is just a stock set that's on the shelf that you can just buy right away. Obviously this is a demo set, so that's not one of those sets, but you can buy those sets from companies off the shelf and that will get you in the gear right away. Obviously, the wait times aren't a good thing for custom gear, and I get that. And they don't have a ton of stock on shelves like CCM and stuff do as well that you can just walk into most stores and buy. I totally get that that's an issue, and it's something that people need to talk about. And hopefully it's just growing pains, and True knows about this, and is going to ramp up and hire more people at the factory in Quebec, and make this all happen and make this all better. But this whole video and this whole series of video is really how the gear performs and how it feels. I'm really glad that these exist, and specifically Lefebvre. We'll see what happens with True and LeFave and see what they do with them. But so far, this gear is just on a set, like I mentioned before, and I mentioned in the glove and the blocker is on such another level what I came to expect from LeFave's old partnership that these are awesome. Now, later on in this video, you're going to see a thigh rise test. So we'll see how this thigh rise handles two puck shots and why I prefer stiffer thigh rises. We'll see a rebound test and we'll see some other videos of me and like the RBH just going over how the pad works and like post coverage. I'm going to try to implement that in all future gear reviews I can do specifically like demo sets and my own set. So I can actually get show what the thigh rise stiffness and stuff like that will do when a puck hits it type thing. Now the reason the ultrasonic is here is because Lefebvre and True, and we're just going to call it True for now on, this is their soft pad. And the E-Flex was always the soft pad that people who didn't want a Vaughn and wanted kind of like a stiffer core would go to. This is not the E-Flex. This is a 
more of a 20.1 with a slightly softer face and different boot design than an E-Flex is. And I'm going to be totally honest with that. To start, the boot is kind of soft. It's not super soft. It's not Bauer 2X Pro 100 at degree soft. It's not E-Flex soft at all. It's just sort of soft, but it's a totally new boot design compared to what the E-Flex was. So we'll talk about that in sizing and stuff like that in post lean, but it's not super, super soft. It's pretty hard. Stiffness, as you can see, this thing is stiff. So this has a single brake internal, single brake external, and no brake internal. I don't know if even this is a double brake option. I don't, I don't think it is anymore. I will overlay if I'm wrong. That is a stiff pad. I'm pushing all the way down on that. That is a stiff pad. This is supposed to be the soft pad. Now, one of the reasons this pad feels pretty stiff is because this gets in the way. So you do this and it gets in the way. Now that was an issue with E-Flex kind of too, but E-Flex, the top felt a lot softer. Now, if this bends in, this does bend a bit more. And that's kind of what the Hyperlite did. So I really think this should be revamped and maybe shortened a bit to give that big a bit of a gap. So you do get a little bit more bend in there to make this a more softer feeling pad. Like I mentioned, this is their soft pad line. This is Bauer's stock stiff pad line. Which one's harder? Now this set has been abused, but this set is a lot softer on like a retail standpoint right off the, the, the like right off the bat than what this is these things are so stiff for sizing comparison these are a 34 plus two these are an xl which ends up being a 36 plus one for bauer it's their exact right on size a 35 plus two on this would end up being the same as the xl bauer which has been the same for the eflex in the past and true well the fave design stuff in the past so it's true to size and everything like that. Sizing for this stuff is true to size in terms of previous CCM Lefebvre designed pads. So not the Axis, um, not this true 20.1. Those both fit an inch bigger than what these do. So these are a 34 plus two. They fit like a 34 plus two in E-Flex. I would need a 35 plus two if I was gonna wear these and be comfortable in them. Without me doing this strap down here, I was kind of falling off the top of the knee block. I don't like to be falling off top of the block and I don't like doing the strap here because I feel like it pulls the pad up. I like the strap here because then it feels like it fits more naturally on my leg. And again, I don't want the pad to be sliding up or down. I don't need to deal with the LDS system. I'm not an NHL goalie. I don't need a certain pad sizing. So I don't really have to do little cheats to make the pad fit bigger. I can just have the pad fit the way it plays. So this being a 34 plus two is totally legit. And here you can see when I'm just in the butterfly, 34 plus two, 34 plus two, 12.2 axis, and also like 20.1. So you're gonna see that inch difference on these. So to get a 34 plus two equivalent on the 20.1 or the axis, you gotta go down to a 33. So just showing that off right there. For a size and comparison, these are a 34 plus two. These are also a 34 plus two. Definitely have that inch difference right there. And you definitely have that difference up here too. So this one, the axis, I'm comparing them because they're gonna be really similar to the 20.1 in terms of sizing and everything and overall design to be totally honest. But you can see that difference right there. These ones are too small on me. These ones fit right for me, especially on knee pads and stuff like that. Uh, so I didn't want it to call that out. So let's talk about the important things first. Um, graphics on these pads, I think are pretty good. The True Designer did a really good job of making them flexible enough. So it's unique in a bunch of different designs. The current pads that Carey Price are wearing look totally different than what this is. He had two designs this year that basically looked like old Coho pads that Patrick Waugh wore in the past. And that's pretty awesome. On top of that, the pads from like Casey DeSmith in Pittsburgh with like this piece being one color and like this piece being a color looked totally unique to a different design like this one. They look like they're different pads altogether. And that's a really awesome job by them in terms of just being able to do something that looks unique as well as having a ton of different combinations. The catching glove also matches really well. So huge props to them for that. For rebounds on this, I'm going to have a rebound video which will be linked up here. So I'm not gonna really talk about them on here. You do have two options on this face. This one is the hard face. And it's harder all the way across. They do have the soft face option as well when you order these. Same thing as what CCM is doing in the E-Flex this year. And I kind of talked about that. For the rebounds, I'll only say one thing on this right now is that 
This had the hardest rebounding shot I've ever recorded off of this. So that was kind of interesting. It wasn't the highest scored overall, but that one shot was really out there. So the one thing I do want to say too about this is I felt shots through this. Um, like down, the hard shots down here and especially on the knee, I felt it go right through. There's not a ton of plush padding back here anymore compared to what the E-Flex line was and the 12.1 line was. So it kind of makes sense in that regards, but I definitely did feel them coming through. It's not that I could tell where the rebound was going or anything like that. These don't play like a soft pad. It's just, there's a lot less of that plush padding to deaden it. Didn't hurt either, just felt it, that's all. And I just want to mention it. Unfortunately, I can't talk about sliding. So we'll get that out of the way right now too. Uh, my synthetic ice sucks to slide on, totally sucks to slide on. It's like I'm not, I'm sliding on plastic and not even close to ice. So whatever I do on there is not gonna translate whatsoever. So I cannot talk about how good sliding is on this. I'm going to say it probably slides better than my experiences in the past with the Lefebvre design CCM gear because this piece is like a solid piece and it's really well constructed and flat all the way through. And it honestly just seems like the, the sliding on here should be pretty solid. It's not gonna be Brian's or Vaughn's or Bauer sliding good. It's still just using a Weave Gen Pro. This one doesn't have their, can't remember whether fast glider or whatever, it's just a Weave. It's not gonna be as good as those companies with the special sliding surfaces, but I think this will be solid all around and it wouldn't be a hindrance. It just wouldn't be the best. Now, something I wanna call out that is awesome on these pads, because you can tell that these are the NHL pads, the same pads all the pros get, is the stitching through this piece right here. So there's a rule in the NHL where the calf wing cannot connect to this piece. And I didn't know about that. I did a Vaughn video of Pro Return Vaughn, saw a little thing here, mentioned it, people told me about it. So then I asked about it and here we are. This gap right here in this stitching line is basically to get that these pads compliant with NHL rules. This can't all be one piece. Now, you can tell who designed gear and knows really, really what they're doing because the 12.2 and the 20.1 don't have stitching through the knee block. But CCM's new gear for their pros do have stitching through the knee block. So there is that gap here. So I wonder why they do that. I wonder who the brains behind that operation was. Anyways, you will not see this binding gap here on CCM gear at retail or so you won't be able to buy it unless you're a pro or in semi pros or somewhere where you can get the pro actual CCM gear. This is the pro true gear. That's awesome. That's legit. It's nice to be able to have that option. Now, I'm sorry about this buckle noise. I can't do anything about it. It's just always there. I'm trying to minimize it and it just doesn't work. Nothing super special here. And I mentioned how if they kind of made this shorter and made this wing a bit shorter. You could definitely get more knee flex in there to make this a softer pad, but it, it's not, right? You can see how nice and thick this is for sliding surface, so stability is pretty solid. It's not the most stable thing because it does flex still a little bit, but it's it's good and I would be, I'd be happy to use this to be totally honest. There's nothing really special going on with this or this at all in terms of how this works. There's no crazy piece going through the, the face. Uh, there's no crazy materials used anywhere. It's a more traditional pad design. It's not a bad thing though, because it just works. I will say opening the Velcro off this is like the most effort I've had to do to open Velcro besides Warriors, but because Warriors are Velcroed everywhere. True uses quality materials everywhere and there's the Velcro is also a piece of that. So here's how the block works. You have your single block here with your Gen Pro because that's going to be the sliding and the weave just connected to this outer flap right here again. Again, not going into the actual block or anything there. You can see just how it's made like this. And then your inner wrap is this piece right here and you have some nice double thick cord going through right here. They don't have to use double pieces of Gen Pro to make this, but they do and it's super quality. And it's attention to detail like that, which makes the True Gear really unique and really awesome. Here's your wing. It's not super hard as you can see. So it's not like a super hard, hard piece, but it's solid enough that it stays stable as well with this whole package in here. When you unvelcro it, you get this really interesting black material that almost looks like quick slide. I'm not sure what this is, but it's kind of interesting that it's in there. Hopefully this will come off on camera, but that's just the wing design. Nothing crazy here, pretty like traditional, but again, their traditional works. And I was critical in the CCM gear in the past 
of specifically like the eflex 4 of not changing anything and being the same and that they had to change something the difference between this gear and the ccm eflex 4 just the quality on this is so good that everything just works way better the blocker felt better the catching glove feels way better it's really the people making this that makes this gear like even though it doesn't have crazy materials on it really good and worthwhile so interesting thing here is that this is just a nylon and they don't have gen pro there and i'm honestly totally okay with that you don't need gen pro on here and you don't need gen pro on the back and then even this is like a hard cordera type thing on here so i'm interested in their use of materials and why they do it i'm not sure why they do it this is definitely going to be lighter than gen pro so i'm okay with it all being on the back it's fine I'm just calling it out you can see the thickness of this pad it's not crazy thin but it is a lot thinner than what their gear used to be especially the 12.1s but it's still pretty thick up here especially with this roll but that's fine like this doesn't get in the way when i use it and moved around a little bit in it and it's thin enough that it's solid enough on top of that it is a stiff core as you can see it doesn't have a ton of movement there and speaking of like the core extremely stiff you can see zero movement and give on this really solid lefebvre design stuff has always been really good no different here something interesting on here and i'm really curious about obviously you have your outer roll here which is just the standard square design and on here you have this interesting piece all the way through the inside that's like right here so you can see how this is flat all around and then it has this piece that really sticks out right here it's almost like the reverse of an outer roll i don't know what the reason for this is but this is interesting and then the sliding edge right here kind of connects to this roll all the way through but i'm just curious as what this is if this is like a harder piece of foam all the way through so you can put the block and the calf into it or why this is really interesting piece right there an interesting design you can really feel it when you go like this you can really feel it right there and you got nothing there but something i just want to call out because i noticed it going on to the boot this is basically the 20.1 and the axis boot very similar in design very similar idea very flat shape overall not a very deep channel and defined channel they're very minimal this will sit higher off on the pad but unlike the previous one they fit kind of the sizing on this the sizing is right on this even with this boot design and you can see just the new boot is still pretty thick but it it's fine by me it's a little soft but it could definitely be softer on their soft pad i love this design i think it works well especially with attaching with the post which i'll talk about in one second there is the inside of the boot as well i still wish this area was covered with a gen pro like in this overlap or something because i still think this is a wear point but it does sit recessed compared to like this flap a little bit but i still wish that was kind of covered just to make sure that wear point wouldn't be a thing decent job right here with the wear zone with the gen pro so that will slide because your leg will kind of push this down i would have possibly liked to see it curl over just to, in case this wears out because i have a feeling that might wear out a little bit but fine it's a fine design it will probably work very well this one has a replaceable bootstrap as you can see really simple idea you just pull it through and it comes out super high quality gen pro they're using here and like thick piece of strap and honestly everything they do with this for all the materials they use is extremely high quality check out my blocker and catching glove review of the 12.2 gear to see the just the difference in quality of gen pro this one uses compared to lefebvre's old partner with ccm way better here this is legit really good stuff i've always seen people rave about pro laces i never got a chance to try them uh this system works really really well i'm not talking about the laces themselves but just how this boot works and this little bit of slack on the pro laces themselves this does a really good job of sealing to the post this can sit on the post and this part kind of separates it from your skate to really allow it to sit on the post while your skate moves more freely behind really solid design it works really really well pro laces themselves are really nice you have this nice bungee inside the skate lace so get a bit more durability but the thickness of these is fantastic so this isn't just a one piece thing it is a double layered gen pro piece and it's really awesome sorry if i'm going out of focus on this and it feels great and it feels like it's going to be super durable and it connects really well and it's thick and it's heavy because it's just going to connect well this these are really nice i totally understand why people like them so much solid design and this little attachment piece here is what is really awesome about this pad design though and i'll show you right now how it works against the posts true said they really worked on the boot and for like post integration and you can see it right here it's actually really good and 
with the way that the pro laces work because they have that gap of slack you can see my foot being inside the post and that kind of gap between the pad and my skate it really does allow that connection to the post and that seal to be better rather than if this was just like one piece all the way through because the pro laces do do a good job of kind of moving on the toe and giving you that seal right there even though the flat boot is pretty similar on the axis compared to the 12.2 you can really see without that the pro laces design and a slight different boot design it doesn't really have that gap between your foot and the pad when you're sealing the post when i pull back it does but that's not natural it's more of this is natural so it basically will be right with your toe i think the true's design is really good in that sense and does something better than most other companies do strapping on the outside is really simple but it works and it's decent you have your knee strap and it comes to this outer flap these are all options so there's a ton of options with these pads and check them out for like all the different strapping options stuff like that this is the removable knee flap you can see the removableness right there it has these tie-ins and you can untie them and put it back in and you got it right there. The part that's really impressive is basically the materials right here, how they use like double layer Gen Pro. And I talked about that before, but again, right here, double layer Gen Pro to sew this through. Not something you totally need, but they do it. And it's a nice touch and it's gonna be more durable and it's a quality feel. Everything on here is quality. I'll mention again and again. Knee strap can go low or here. When I wore these and if I wore these on ice, I would have to bring it down here to pull the knee up a little bit just because these are a little bit small, but Solid design. It's just such nice and soft Velcro and just amazes me again and again, the quality of this pad and how nice everything feels. You do have this outer strap that goes through here. And I mentioned this on the 20.1 review. This is kind of like not super fancy and nice. CCM does a great job on how they do stuff like this. True really doesn't. That's kind of the simple things that True does. True makes like a more simple pad without the frills and stuff, but it's so good and the quality is so amazing that it doesn't matter. This piece is fine. I really like how it's a leather tab that you can pull off. It's fine. This is a nice, hard, almost seatbelt like material right here. Really good, like everything right there. It's just not fancy like the other companies are and that's fine. It works well. I wouldn't mind seeing this rubberized in the future with like True's logo, but that's so like not actually important that I would rather them keep making pads like this than do any of that stuff to make it more gimmicky and to satisfy my little weird nitpick there. The inner strapping and part of the genius of the fave doing their new pads is this FRS system. Now, unfortunately, because I can't get this on ice, I really wanted net cam footage of me moving around on this, but here we are, can't do it. Interesting thing is they added this pillow on the 12.2s that wasn't on the 20.1, at least I don't think it was. So this, I always talk about calf pillows helping to push stuff down and this, as well as the FRS system is really gonna kind of help seal that calf a little bit. I wouldn't have minded this to be a little bit thicker, but it's fine and I'm, there might be some NHL legal requirement there to not make that bigger, but it's fine, solid design and I really love this fast rotation system design. You have this strap obviously right here and you have these right here, how these work. One, they can attach right here, as you can see, this goes over so it doesn't peel up. And then this part comes here, so you can adjust how tight this strap is. I found when wearing this, I wanted these as loose as possible. I found too, my leg was just too fat, I guess, to fit in here to make these really tight. So I tried to make these as loose as possible and to give, but if you wanna crank that down, you definitely can do that and it'll really lock your leg in place. And the way that this is designed, you can see it kind of curls around your your leg and it should be a pretty solid wrap right there. This does seem like it has less, I'll have to check on my 20.1 video. It does seem like it has less segments than it used to have. So that's kind of interesting. And I don't remember this piece being like that. So interesting that they swapped that out. Here's more of that funky material I mentioned on the calf. You can see it right there. The funny thing is CCM also puts this on their pro gear that kind of mimics this. So like Markstrom has a strap it's the same material as this, which is really odd to me. Anyways, that goes there and that is fine. Like I said, this was really tight for me. If I were to order this pad, I would get this in loose fit just because it didn't feel like it was quite loose enough for me. And I wanted it to slop a little bit more. Just personal preference thing. This works well if you want a tight design pad, tight leg channel. I tend to like a little bit more of a sloppy leg channel. So my, like this kind of just flops down a little bit, but it's just a personal preference thing overall. Anyways, there is the leg channel pretty, bare bones, it's fine. All nylon all throughout, and you can see how it is. You do have some padding right here as well as right here on that landing area, so that is kind of nice for that. I mentioned a bit earlier that I felt shots to this, and there's not a ton of foam padding. A little bit here, 
nothing like right there and a little bit up here, but not a ton. So not a lot of padding throughout this. It's fine. The shots don't hurt. You just notice them. That's all. One of the easiest way to tell how quality Lefebvre stuff is, is the sure grip. So they use sure grip on the knee wing right here. And it's just going to be, uh, should be semi durable material here, but it's also going to give you a little bit of extra grip. Bauer now uses this on the Hyperlite, but this sure grip is so much nicer and so much more textured. And you can really see the textured look of it right there. A lot of the like CCM sure grip, Bauer sure grip, it just, it, the textureness is kind of lost on it and it just smooths out and it doesn't really feel as textured, just feels like it's a stamp design and not really a texture. This feels like a textured material. It's, it's really solid, it's really good and it comes back to how good of materials Lefebvre and True use in making their gear like pro stuff and actually the top end materials. This is it, they don't cut corners for stuff like this and that's really impressive. Pad seal is really good and I'll show videos of like how it is. The thigh rise will come off a bit when you lean in RVH, but it's pretty solid all around and True does a really good job with that. So I talked a lot on the axis about how the pad tilts when you lean into it and it happened as well on the 20.1. Watch for alarm off, you can see it happen all the time. The 12.2s don't do this as much. If you watch price, you can still see it tilt a little bit, but as you can see, it holds its kind of flatness a lot better. The tops come off a little bit, but that's really me leaning into it and again, a little bit there, that's really me leaning into it. This is all my weight on the pad itself. A normal RVH, it's gonna go up about that. So it's a good seal, especially compared to what was done before. Um, so this one is definitely a stiffer pad right there. To bend it down, you can do it a little bit, but the whole core is a lot stiffer than what the axis was, which we'll show in a second. Compared to the axis, which will be very similar compared to the 20.1, you can see the lean and how the pad really folds over when you go into the RVH. So if you're really leaning in there, the pad really folds in. And even like me not leaning, you can definitely see it bend over a lot more than what the 12.2 does. So that's kind of just what this design did and True kind of went away with that and made it a little bit more stable and flat compared to this Well, Again, 20.1 comparison on this one too though. For weight, I hate weighing pads because I think it doesn't matter until you wear it on ice and weight is more marketing than anything else. I don't know what the weight of these pads directly is. They're not super light, to be honest. They don't feel super light. They don't blow me away with lightness. On my leg, they felt great. Um, they felt really well balanced. I felt like I could move pretty well in them and they never really tired me out or anything like that. They were solid all around. So I gotta give them props for that. So it's another reason why I think weight isn't a huge thing because of it's all how it fits on your leg and it's all how you wear it and play with it. The one of the lightest pads I ever wore was the Eflex 4 and it was the pad that I was most tired in after playing in it. So kind of just how it swings. So this next part of this video is just going to show the how stiff the thigh rise is on a true 12.2 and just how pucks react or how the thigh rise reacts when pucks hit it and if it like kind of bends and goes in. I've been covering soft thigh rises and goals that happen kind of like the NHL and, and things I see uh, through Instagram and so through some like YouTube shorts and stuff like that and posts about that. So this kind of ties into that and really shows how the pad reacts when a puck hits the thigh and kind of what happens with the pad and how, and if like pucks can go in and stuff like that. And afterwards when I'm talking about the true 12.2 pad and how like the stiffness is kind of overall, we'll overlay some footage of that thigh rising kind of a slow-mo version just so you get a better view but there'll be a separate video showing all these views off as well yeah try that So on to pad stiffness. And so I showed the videos 
of this pad getting hit with pucks and the thigh rise does a pretty good job of keeping pucks out in the butterfly it did a phenomenal job and pucks didn't squeak through you can see the flexibility of that knee right there but the thigh rise itself is stiff enough that it really stops pucks from going anywhere in the rvh a few of the pucks did squeak through obviously it's a little different because you're leaning back on the pad and not really forward of the pad and that's just kind of a situation that shouldn't happen but it does but that is it's fine. I wouldn't be worried about this pad and it wouldn't be disappointing to me of using that pa this pad. This is a great pad. I have zero problems with it in terms of me wearing it. And I, I think it's really good. I would love to wear this pad. I think it would work really well for me. I probably wish it was a little bit better sliding, but besides that, I would be pretty happy with this pad on me and I think it would like work with my game really well. The problem is this is supposed to be a soft pad and the E-Flex was basically one of the most popular soft pads on the market. This is not a soft pad at all. I showed you the brakes on how this doesn't bend at all. In my opinion, I think True should leverage what the Fave can do in their factory and keep making that old line of gear. Now, you don't have to make them for retail in terms of putting them on a shelf every year and putting, and you can just be like heritage line. You just keep the catalog the same, keep it the same. If it's offered in the NHL, it should be offered retail and now i know people and pro reps are probably gonna be like no no no, that's not a thing this is different if it's coming off the same line offer it for a surcharge at retail yes true has to get their timelines for custom gear down everyone knows that it's beating a dead horse at this point and i keep doing it for some reason in this video regardless having those old lines like the l 4.1 as well as the 12.1 just give those diehard fans an option without having to try to buy your gear pro stock or buy old U stock let them buy it new you're still making it for flurry you're still making it for smith you're still making this old gear just allow it to be an option for a surcharge please it always bugs me when pros can get stuff on gear that's obviously made from the factory and is obviously possible that retail can't get anymore. Bauer with this blocker is a perfect example. This thing was available for pros all the time, but you couldn't get it retail, but we're paying the money and we're like the whole reason companies advertise in the NHL is so people buy them at retail. Please let people buy a 12.1 at retail. This is a phenomenal pad. I would love this pad. I'm not the market for soft pads. So that's the problem. This pad needs to be softer. Now I know the 12.2 can be broken in to get more of a curve and to really soften that thigh rise, but it should be like out of the box like that. And with the 12.1, you still had that option to do that. And they took that away on the 12.2. And you can now see on the 20.2 customer, it's still, that's not an option still. I really, really hope True and Lefebvre do something with making this pad softer, offering more internal breaks, kind of cutting this down, giving a softer boot and really a, giving an option to those people who like that softer pad. Because if I'm a fan of this pad and I'm someone who wears XX stiff Bauer pads, I'm not the target for this pad. This is a great pad, it's awesome, but it should be an option. You should still have that soft core available. And I think that this pad specifically is too close to the 20.1 to make a whole ton of sense. Again, this isn't me saying this is a bad pad. This is a great pad. I just think they really need to make a significant change between this line and the 20.1 line to make them really differentiate each other and make it more like soft pad friendly. Bauer was the same way a little while ago with the Ultrasonic and the 2X Pro and the 1X, all of those pads and the, I guess 1S or 2S, all those pads were too similar to each other in stiffness and everything. Now with the Hyperlite, they went a lot softer and that's what this needs to do too. This has to go softer. The quality on this stuff is just unbelievable. True, absolutely crushed it by buying the fave. It, it's amazing and very, it's evident of how many people are wearing the true gear in the NHL when they used to always wear the faves old partner in CCM. 99% of them went to true. This stuff is unreal. The quality of this is unreal. The craftsman's unreal. I totally understand why people love this stuff. And it makes sense to me. And they don't really have to change and use fancy tech and materials everywhere because this stuff works. It just works and it works really well. But this is too similar to the 20.1. And I really hope they change that. That's about it for this video. Hopefully the whole line of videos for tw true 12.2 gear was helpful and useful. Huge thank you for Jess Hockey for making it happen by letting me use their demo set and abuse their demo set with the puck machine. It is greatly appreciated and it wouldn't have happened without them. If you want to see me review more gear or if this video was really helpful in making a purchase, please reach out to the company. 
on social media, let them know. Or if you want to see me review a specific piece of gear, reach out to a company on social media, let them know. Say you want hockey reviews to review your stuff. Greatly appreciate on my end. And stuff like this doesn't really happen unless someone comes in big. So that's why I ask people to do that. With that said, it'd be great to show your support and appreciation of these videos to GS Hockey. Go to their website, follow them on Instagram, make a hockey purchase on their website. They have a ton of everything, like I mentioned. Earlier, the custom glove order I did was phenomenal. The experience was really good. And that's not because I'm someone special. I ordered through them in the past without me ever talking to them, without my channel, and everything was really smooth and really excellent. So if you go there, let them know you came from one of my videos. It helps me in that sense so they can, don't lock me out of their store. And it would just show appreciation. That'd be really appreciated. Otherwise, if you want to support the channel so I can be doing videos like this and real, otherwise you want to support the channel so I can be doing videos like this and use the puck machine and everything like that and do real tests, check out the links in the description to do Patreon and buy me a coffee. Everything through there will come right back into the channel so I keep making content and making more videos. Thank you very much for watching. Check out all the true videos I have on this. There's a lot. You're watching hockeyreviews.ca.